Good day everyone. Thanks for watching this educational video about grease selection for ball bearings. I am Besha Saba, Senior Technical Advisor of Holly Frontier Specialty Lubricants in Ontario, Canada. Ball bearing elements. Every single ball bearing, either single or double row, have some common components such as inner race, which we identify its diameter by bore, outer race, which we identify its diameter by outside diameter, the thickness or width, cage or separator, and balls. Grease has three components, base oils, thickeners, and additives like extreme pressure EP additives. Base oils are typically mineral or synthetic. Thickeners can be different type of metal soaps or non-soaps such as polyurea or clay. For roller bearing application, the majority of the time, lithium or lithium complex thickeners are recommended. Additives are selected based on the application and operation of the grease. You can learn more about the grease in another recorded webinar. To choose the right base oil viscosity for the bearing, we need to calculate the speed factor or NDM. NDM is the mean diameter of the bearing in millimeters time speed in RPM. The mean diameter of the bearing is the outside diameter plus inside diameter divided by 2. A low NDM means the bearing is rotating slowly. If the NDM is around 50,000, the base oil viscosity required for the grease is between 1,000 to 1,500 centistoke at 40 Celsius. On the contrary, if the NDM is around 1 million, the base oil viscosity required for this grease is between 15 to 32 centistoke at 40 Celsius. It means that the bearing is rotating very fast. So using this calculation will help us choose the correct base oil viscosity for the bearing application. Bearing temperature versus clearance and 5 EP tests. The bearing manufacturer considers a calculated clearance in their bearing design to make sure that thermal expansion will not damage the bearing while it's working. As a rule of thumb, if the bearing temperature is 70 to 85 Celsius, we need to have a C2 clearance bearing. If the bearing temperature is up to 250 Celsius, we need to have a C3 clearance bearing and if the bearing temperature is up to 300 Celsius, we need to have a C4 clearance bearing. What happens if the temperature goes over 300 degrees? The bearing will collapse. If you have a temperature gun to measure the bearing housing temperature, estimate the bearing inside temperature by adding 15 Celsius to the reading. For example, if the outside housing temperature is 65, plus 15 means the temperature inside the bearing is around 80 Celsius. There are five types of EP tests, Almond, Felix, Timken, 4-ball EP, and SAE. Extreme pressure additives are used to enhance the extreme pressure property of the grease. Hertzian pressure or stress. When two bodies having curved surfaces are pressed together, point or line contact changes to area contact and the stresses developed in the two bodies are three-dimensional. This was presented by Mr. Hertz, so it's known as Hertzian stress. As you can see in the left picture, the contact between the two balls is point contact. On the right picture, the contact between two cylinders is line contact. Grease for ball test based on STMD 2596. In a ball bearing, we have the point contact, which means the surface of the ball will be in contact with the outer layer of the inner race. This is considered a Hertzian pressure and a stress at the contact point. Four ball test equipment is designed to simulate exact industrial application inside the tribology lab. In this test, we have three balls at the bottom and one ball on the top inside the cavity and we fill the cavity with grease. Then we rotate the upper ball at 1770 RPM and apply a vertical force. Little by little we increase the force 
and on a specified interval we measure the wear scar diameters on the balls and it, this gives us an indication of how the extreme pressure additive is behaving under this test condition. The weld point is the lowest applied load at which either the rotating ball seizes and welds to the three stationary balls or at which extreme scoring of three stationary balls occurs. Next time, when you want to choose a grease for your ball bearing, you can look at the speed factor or NDM of your bearing based on the bearing design and geometry and the rotating speed. This will help you to find the right base or viscosity for your grease. Then, when you compare two greases, the one with the higher four ball test result will be a better choice. Thank you for watching this educational video on grease selection for ball bearings. If you require more information, please contact me using my contact details. Thank you and have a great day.